Many people play the flute, so they call themselves, I'm a flutist, I'm a flautist, I'm a flute player. I see myself as a musician that happens to play the flute and all these instruments here. Good, so we're back. I brought my tea. I'm in England, so I need to drink tea. Like this in Cockney, I got my water. And I got Your my water. suja. Very good. Yeah, and doctor, while you sip a little bit there, if I can give you a little quick example of, yes, please. of this thing and be specific quickly, yeah. because then we go into the please. scientific realm of this thing. Because I'm very go curious ahead. to know how you as a neuroscientist not only see this, but how can you help me as a musician even gain higher perspective, broader perspective that will add, that will bless me as a musician to get better in my, in my, in my, in my, in my endeavor of communicating. We were once in the early 2000s in London, actually you're gonna love this, at the Royal Gallery, at the National Gallery. We were with an artist that will remain uh, uh, on name. The production was so disorganized that they couldn't find uh, the visas on time for the band we were with to go to Sweden. The Swedish embassy kept telling them, come tomorrow, come tomorrow, come tomorrow. So we stayed an extra whole week <laughs> Wow. In, in London. Just for the visas. Just, yeah, because just many of the bands were the coming visas. from a country that needed a special visa and they didn't I manage see. that on time. And one day we went to the National Gallery. Now, this is the perfect example of a, dis a description of, of transcending. I'm going to drop a very fancy term. Please, please that go ahead. That, that, that illustrates that heavily makes the point of music as an objective out of the realm of criticism, I repeat, experience. As the great uh, Cheli Bidake would say, music has no choice. There's no choice to music. If the conditions are right, and we talk about the conditions, we can talk about the conditions later, the people in the process have no other option but to transcend. I see. That's heavy. Yeah. yeah. So, Pedro, how come you can be that arrogant that you can say that music is objective, that it's not, it's not in the eye of the beholder, and this and that? No, 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 yeah. it's not. It's not. It's not. And there's a term that Husserl coined, T-I-S, transcendental intersubjectivity. And Maestro Cristina Cosell told me that in German, and she said the word, it's even worse. It says, yeah. <laughs> living this for our souls to unite somewhere else. And that happened to me at the National Gallery. I was with Sarah and we sat in front of a, a barely a sketch of Leonardo da Vinci, of the Madonna and baby Jesus. Not even a finished piece, just the sketch. Still the essence plastered in that canvas, in that. And the lights, were, again, talking about conditions, the lights yep, were yep, right. Yep. The distance was right. There's like a little shrine. They put this thing and we're in a little bench, right? At the right angle and right distance away from it. Nobody crossing in front of us. So the conditions were perfect for us to breathe, be free. And the two of us without talking, without nothing, just we started not weeping, but it was such an internal thing. Yeah. Sarah, my wife, who is living her own reality as a human being, me, Pedro, living my own reality as a human being, we left those two subjective realities. We were experienced something as one while we are two separate beings. How is that possible? Only possible as a consequence of something objective that is so incredibly profound mm -hmm. that would not allow us any other option but to transcend both of our subjectivities and meet ourselves in an outside commonplace and experience this thing and that was 10 15 minutes something like that we lost sense of time material chronological time we we, we literally and then we came back and said Whoa, what was that? There's no need to talk because words, num number one, they're, they're very poor to describe something like that. Number two, would have destroyed 
that which they're trying to describe was not in music, but it's an experience in art that we had that I always come back to because I live that. Many times for music, obviously, but this is one where I can say, not even talk about when we, well, you, 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 you're my witness at, at, at uh, O2 with 18,000 people. You were there. Yeah, I remember. That's that. not two people. That, <laughs> That's thousands of people. No. That's transcending, people. leaving their subjective contained yeah, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. and meeting themselves at that place. Of course, what words usually do is that if you label something, you immediately... Uh, limit. Com compress and limit the, the, the richness of the experience itself that is basically endless. You can, you can, you can be describing some... Ex a, 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 a very specific experience for ages. And never get to describe it correctly. <laughs> it, it, yeah, exactly. It's impossible to, to, to express, to, to contain an experience with words. But even though you cannot do that, we can agree upon each other yes. of what happened. Yes. So there is some level of access that we can still communicate between each other about Correct. what what we experienced. Correct. It's beyond words, but there is some kind of intuition about what that thing is that we might agree on, roughly agree on, on what we experienced. And to me, that it's an, as a scientist, it's like an indirect way of confirming that the, there is something beyond words that we agree. won't be able to characterize or to explain in any in any single sense not scientifically not uh, so yeah just 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 as an example we can talk about the experience of i don't know love from so many different angles a, a poet is going to explain love in a in a completely different way as a scientist would do or as a musician would do or so, as an anthropologist would do but i wouldn't say that there is some kind of privileged access to the phenomena depending on what you do. They all have different access to the same thing from different angles because the experience of love is so rich Correct. that you cannot completely explain it away and so from universal. one point of view. And so universal. Exactly. That's why I think this view is completely um, an, uh, some kind of an outlier uh, view. Because in our days, everything is about relative things. So everything is about um, subjectivity. Everything is about points of views. Everything is about opinions. We live in the age of relativism. Quoting my, my brother, colleague, uh, Juan Garcia Herreros, Snow Owl. Hmm. I'm sorry, I don't want to be detrimental, but it's the truth. He, he says it all the time, and it's true. We live also in the age of incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. And we can give so many examples that we're not going to give. So universals are something that completely like out of fashion. Nobody speaks about universal values anymore or universal experiences anymore. Because that, that's so 19th century. That's so, so 18th century, if you want. I still have my doubts, but there is something that tells me deep inside that There are certain realities that are probably universal and there are so many ways of reaching them. There are so many different approaches to actually try to like touch them. And one of them is absolutely um, true, that is music. I don't have any other way to explain how Bach, Mozart can be appreciated by so many at so many different times yes. in so many different cultures. There's, there's no other way I can explain that, but there is a, a universal objectivity contained therein yeah. that will touch the pygmies in, 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 in Black Africa. Mm -hmm. They will connect with that and say, that's our music. Do you have any example of how studying musical phenomenology has influenced the way how you play, the way how you express uh, your emotions, the, the way how you express yourself through your instruments. After all my ages and having studied all, studied all over the world and with so many, in so many different cultures, musical cultures of the world and great masters, I'm still studying. Literally every Thursday I got my lesson with my instructor Christina Cosell. And I feel like a little kid, which is beautiful. I always keep saying that God made me a musician to keep me humble all of my life. <laughs> 
you cannot have any ego problem when you come to art because art will kick your butt, literally, and put you in your place. When I teach, which I don't have much time now, unfortunately, but whenever I do, and I have done in the past, I have invited, be it flute or be it uh, music fundamentals, I give lectures and stuff all over the world uh, with this thing. And when it comes to any of this, I invite whoever is an instrumentalist or a singer to revise, to re-examine the approach of how they see themselves concerning their craft. Many people play the flute, so they call themselves, I'm a flutist, I'm a flautist, I'm a flute player. I see myself as a musician that happens to play the flute and all these instruments here. The difference is that technique, the playing, the objective thing of doing this, which don't, please don't misinterpret me, it's, it's extremely difficult to play good. Yes. It is. And, and, and to achieve a level of exuberance and virtuosism, I don't know if that even exists in English, I think that's a Spanish word, but that virtuosic level of expression and to into and the refinement to be able to get to do certain things is so difficult and is so hard and it demands so much work that unfortunately those who achieve that or to seek that allow that very hard process to become the objective they forget that that is literally a door that is uh, a tool, not an objective, not an ending terminal thing, terminus, like when the boss goes to the, uh, to the end of, of the lane. No, it is literally, that's just half of it. Then we can control uh, and we can express ourselves in this way, then we can access to what music is. Chelly Biraki would say that in order to experience transcendence, he seek to uh, experience transcendence to be free. You cannot be limited by technical things and thinking, oh, this hard passage is coming now. I'm going to situate my fingers in this way so I can do it so that the fork fingerings do not obstruct my flow. And then there cannot be any music because I'm still preoccupied in the realm of the physical objective reality of technique. I need to be free of thought. I need to be free of thinking that what I learned with Maestro <clears throat> Mark and Thakar about the Chelibidaka articulations, which is the pattern of energy contained is like almost like a, a hidden treasure map inside the score where you, we can see the he calls it the dynamic, the uh, dynamic uh, structure of the piece, which is the musical topology I see. Of, of the, the energy music, within yeah. the piece. When I'm aware of these things, and after being aware, and I've worked my technique, and I'm aware of, and I've done my noetic yes, exactly. job, which is my intellectual thing of, I'm going to analyze the piece, I'm going to see where the fully tonicized fifths are, which will give me an indication of where the climax of that piece is, because the climax might be on my way to the farthest away Directly connected, tonal size fifth. We can talk about that later. I can explain that later. It's, it's like a like a like like an indicator of where the pattern of energy, the farthest the fully tonal size fifth is away from the home key. That is the farthest way of energy that we can go to. So that's the farthest away the journey can go from which I have to then hit and then come back. I'm asking about musical rhetoric, which is what persuasive narrative uh -huh, uh -huh. so I can persuade somebody into transcendence if I did my noetic thing then that I have to make sure it becomes noema a noem it becomes something beyond the realm of my thinking of my exactly. control of my fingers then I can go so if they consider themselves musicians then they have a clear perspective of what to search where to go how to grow as musicians. This is what has nurtured my thing 
since 35 years and finally I'm find I'm starting to find answers. If I'm understanding well what you need, let's say that you you want to have another Mozart in our days. Let's say that you want to have another Bach in our days. Um, so what you're looking for is for a special type of architect. You're looking for an architect that is able to combine building blocks in a way that the one that is receiving those building blocks in the form of sounds is able to transcend. So he's creating the conditions for transcendence. That is correct. So my question is, how can you educate someone to become such an architect? This is a great question, but it's almost a self-destructive uh, question because I need to turn it a little bit in order to answer part of it because the first part we cannot answer. We cannot recreate a Mozart or a Bach. If we deconstruct what you were describing on uh, what, where, when you were in front of this masterpiece and you observe it and the conditions were right and the moment was right and everything was right in such a way that it allows you and your wife to actually transcend to this common place that is beyond your body. Or my mind. What I'm asking, in your mind, what I'm asking is basically a musician, a, someone that is actually a genius, I think has the maybe implicit knowledge of knowing how to create those conditions inside the music. I don't know mm -hmm. if they were aware to the level of, oh, I'm going to tonicize the fifths so that it... I think, oh, well, who yeah. was, the, was it Goethe who described genius as an explosion of nature within the culture? To begin with, Bach was not even aware of his genius. And I'll tell you why. Historically, he kept saying when people would uh, compl compliment him, he would say, well, anybody that would have worked as hard as I did with 10 fingers can do the same thing I did. He was not even aware of his level of genius. So I don't think they're aware, just, just, to, just to... Good, good, just good. To be good, good, good. But I, yes, I, I, the I second part of your question, yes, I agree. In fact, over and over and over again, Celi Vidake says, Bach, Mozart, Bruckner, were great, are the highest phenomenologists ever. Because yeah, you know what? They know what the nitty-gritty of music is. In the case of Bach, of Bach, was to glorify God and elevate the human soul. In the case of Mozart, his, his historical place was in enlightenment. It was where the individual, not only the institution, is recognized. So, yeah. for, and I learned this with Professor Greenberg, of the great courses, by the way, this is a great, great, great teacher. I love him. I learned a lot of things from him. He says, for Mozart, the greatest music that could impact the common man was the greatest thing. So imagine putting the depth of the musical reality, but in such a way that a common man can be affected by it. Yeah. He's a, that's when I say that Mozart gives me the illusion of accessibility. That when I really study it in a noetic way, I freak out because it's not accessible as you initially think it is. In order to experience transcendence, we need a masterpiece, number one. So it's hard to transcend with something that is not well written, which is what you just referred. Number two, we have what I mentioned before, instrumentalists or performers of such a level of not only technique, but consciousness that goes beyond noetics, that are able to go into noema, which is the life experiencing level of this thing. In acoustics that are so correct and so well catered to, Shelly Bidake all the time would say, acoustics are a generator form because tempo comes as a consequence of what I can do so that in the acoustic realm of where I am, I can convey the articulations so vividly the way the energy, the breathing energetic patterns of 
the, the peace that should be experienced as one. We haven't even talked about that. That's the most important thing. To be able to be experienced as a one, as a unity. That's the only yeah. way we can transcend. We cannot transcend by experiencing fragmented things. And that's why we cannot deal with, with multiplicities. I'm going to shut up because then you want to ask me something. That's basically uh, triggers in my head um, a question related to what I just asked you about why we don't have any Mozarts in our times. And I would say that there is a reason for that. And... <laughs> and the reason is not only I mean the tragedy is not only happening in music it's happening on so many different fields I agree I'm not against specialization because I'm a specialist on something um, you are a specialist on something as well but I think over specializing on some field or some aspect of reality without caring at all about what that aspect that you're studying relates to the other ones Fabulous. is the biggest crime that education has done in the in the last century um, because we will end up knowing absolutely everything about nothing because we're we're zooming in so so much that is so good but at some point we would know everything about stuff that it's absolutely useless in the sense that it doesn't allow you to communicate with other correct with other disciplines, with other sciences, with other fields. Correct. You just end up completely isolated in your bubble, knowing absolutely everything about very specific things, but absolutely incapable of um, having a wider context. Correct. Of actually knowing stuff that will allow you to integrate Correct. information from different perspectives. Correct. If you think about the physicists of the 20th century, Einstein, Schrodinger, if you think about Neil Bohr, if you, th if you think about all the geniuses of the first half of the century, they all knew everything. They knew Latin, they knew Greek, they read poetry, they read philosophy. Einstein played the violin. The toolboxes that they had were ridiculously big Very as good. compared to the toolboxes that we have now. So I'm, I'm going to sound extremely pessimist. But I think that in our times, it's, it's, it would be almost a miracle to have another, um, I don't know, uh, Mozart. Because, yeah. because the, the, the system is not... It goes beyond the system, but to begin with. Doctor, I think, I think a half hour is over, huh? Yes. So we're going to stop here, and then I want your answer. Very good. Excellent. Good.